rebuild GTK dock. So let's find that GTK dock. Here it is. Yeah, for XML PDF support. So let's extract it. Actually, I didn't notice if the configure. Oh, yes, PDF support enabled. Yes, that's good. So let's install this now. So we should have this additional functionality now. Let's check it. And yes, I've seen PDF stuff there. So that's good. It's, it's found FOP and it's using it. As long as it tests, okay. All right, we've got seven tests I failed. So, why would that be? Oh, it could be these other packages that have failed, cause it to fail. So, we've still got things that aren't complete with this. Let's see if this test suite log shows us anything. So that's looking for a Python module. Um, I wonder if it's worth reinstalling AdXML. See if that fixes it. There's another one there to do with Python. Oh, so that one looks like it's missing one of the files it uses for testing. It's saying that the file or it doesn't exist or it's empty, so I can skip that one. And again, and again, and again, and again. So really, it's just ignoring those PDF ones. It's these two Python ones. Now, the only Python related thing is this LXML, so I'm going to reinstall that. We'll leave his GTK dot there. Uh, we'll have to go into the Python directory now. We'll rebuild both of them.
Okay, so they've both built. Let's test the Python 2 modules. So that's successful. Let's run the same for Python 3. Let's finally install the package. Oops. So install Python 2. And the same for Python 3. Let's rebuild that. Let's rebuild and retest GTK doc.
So we'll rerun this again. <coughs> Install it and let's make a check. So we've got the same seven again, so that wasn't the reason. Um, it does say that they were filed depending on option installed packages, so whether these are Python modules or not, I don't know. So I think that's as far as we can go with, with uh, GTK docs. I'm going to mark that as complete on my list. And tidy up the source. Uh, which was marked off on the list that I'm keeping as I go along. So that's all done. So the next one I've got is Oh, we can rebuild Barclay DB after Java it says here, so let's have a look at that. There it is there. Why this needs to be built. Oh, right, okay, it's got a switch to enable Java. Support is currently broken with Java 10. So, does that mean is that the version we've got? No, it's version 12, so. Should be okay, I assume. So let's extract it. And we've got this fix for the current version of G. And then a configure command, so let's just check these options. So we'll add these two TCL and the enable Java option. So we've got TCL installed. Right, okay, so it doesn't recognize the job we've got, so there's probably little point. I wonder if it might be the BLFS subscript that's confusing it, possibly. Oh, is it not configure? any other options to modify that so we'll just have to leave that as it is and I'll mark that off as complete even though we've not done anything to it. Uh, the next one I've got that we can do is sudo to rebuild after Kerberos, so we've got Kerberos installed now. So let's load that one up. Oh no, it needs open LDAP as well as an option, so I'm going to modify the note I've got here. After I wouldn't normally install open LDAP, but it looks like I seem to remember somewhere seeing that it was a dependency that was required. So next we've 
got is Xorg Proto. Now there's a few Xorg ones and it's likely that it's going to cause a problem with the X Windows beings. The X Windows system is currently running so we'll have to expect that. So Xorg Proto. Yeah, it's this one, until macros, it's obviously installed. Yeah, it's part of the X window in. So I'll have to go into the XC directory for this. Extract Xorg Proto. And let's just check we've got the Xorg prefix still. We have, so that's good. There's no options, we'll just build it. And that's finished. So it will become the root. Prefix here we have, so I can just put all that in and reinstall it. So that's that one. The next one I've got is XMLTO. So I'll have to find that. So it's that one. Oh, I should be marking these off as well. Should not on the list, just making sure they've gone. Yeah, that one has. So XMLTO. We've got links. Enough. I've got a note here to rebuild links after Xorg, and I don't know why because it's text base. I'll go install it after I've got an MTA, so I'll change my note for that. Sure, why I'd put down for Xorg. So back to the BLFS directory. Extract the XML TO program, source code rather. And looks like no options to install, we just fire away and rebuild it. And make check. That's a pass. So do minus E eight install. And that's rebuilt. And you can see there's the PDF format, so that I imagine is what FOP would have done. So that's XMLTO done. In 49, yep, that's all marked off, and I'll mark it off on my rebuild list. 
Now I've got Libex DMCP. Libex DM. So this is one of the ones that has got a FOP dependency. And so this is in the XC directory again. Lib XD MCP. Straightforward rebuild. It's done. I've got all the XOR libraries to be rebuilt in FOP or after FOP rather so that will be the part of the XOR libraries where there's several um, libraries to be built so that's Libraries there, that one there. One or more of the following. Arguably, we could install links here, the looks of it. it. Does say one or more. We've got all the dependencies for links, so we might as well install this. So this is the other text browser. And it looks like this has got a graphics mode option. So let's enable that. of goodies set up for us already so let's build it and there's no test suites we just install it and that's done any configuration no interest if it finds no it's running as text mode so I imagine that is probably something we need to do to enable the graphics mode and there you go there's some options there well, there's quite a few options actually So minus G running graphics mode, so let's try that. I've never done this before. Minus G, yep, there's a big window appeared. Let's paste it. Go to your oops. Go to your URL. Let's try www.bbc.co.uk. And yeah, that's it's still behaving as a I oh, know it has downloaded some graphics with the looks of it. Let's go to the news. Usually got loads of pictures. 
Yeah, it's just looks like little. Looks like it's loading some pictures, but not all of them. So, but as you can see, it's basically still a text browser. It's just text with a few pictures to a basic browser. So, all very good. Like that office complete. So we've got a complete complement for these libraries. So if we go into XC, don't need to download them again. We can add this sudo uh, this function shell function. Run a subshell that will exit on an error. And in theory, CD lib. That looks like we should be in the lib directory from that previous command. Just need to run this script and wait for it to finish. So we can exit the subshell and just check um, I mean these shouldn't need to be done because that they would be in place already but in case they've got overwritten we can just do them again to be sure.
So that is the um, XORG libraries completed after FOP. So just looking down to see what else I can do. There's one here for live VDPAU. VD power to be installed after Doxygen and Graphy. So I've got both of those now. So I'm going to look for that one. This must be part of another DRM. This one's got to be reinstalled. Is there libvo and libvd pal? So where I've got to be part of the xorg. Let's go through these. So libraries are just done the utility These are uh, my code we've done and mark up safe. Exorg applications. Oh, is it this bit here? Exalt drivers. Yes, it's this bit. So the Lithia has got to be reinstalled, but that needs Wayland, and that needs to be reinstalled. I'll find enough to stock some graphics. Let's get these two up. Not sure what that one is there. Video Pal didn't install that one for some reason. I think I might install that. That's why I didn't install it. Oh, is it because VA API is not available on the chipset I've got? It should be, it's recent. Yeah, I'm going to install this afterwards. Not sure why I missed that one. So, lib Pal. VA 
Yeah, this needed Wayland. Which can be re or needs to be reinstalled after Doxion Graph is. Yeah. So I'll do this one next. Uh, island one. So we don't need to disable documentation now. In theory, it should all build because we've got all optional dependencies, assuming they're correct, of course. And let's run make to build it. And make check to test it. <coughs> Wayland is being rebuilt and this is in section 9 and yeah it's already marked off so now I can reinstall libva is oh, what have I gone? The VA, that's it, the VA. So back into XC. If you are reinstalling this package, you will need to remove the older versions of the libraries. And any packages that use these files will need to be rebuilt. As far as I know, I haven't got anything installed apart from the Intel VAPI. We're going to rebuild libvd power, which might use these. So I think we can just go for the build. And then make install. And now to install the VA API driver. Make and again make install. And that should be done. So mark that one off as done. I'm going to move on to the libvd pal. This one needs doxion graphes, which of course we've now got. Past and install, and that's done. So mark that off, but check my. No, 
notes for, yeah, I've got these marked off. And I'm going to rebuild the VD Power VAGL now. Sorry, build it, not rebuild it. So I'm going to put this into XC with the rest of them. And this is the GL driver of VA. Make check hundred percent passed. Make install and we have to export variable to make this work. Is the root and why is that not working? Let's try it. Ready as root, the root. Okay. It's in there. Okay. So that should be those done now. So what I'll do now is quit this to make sure the X environment is still running. And I'm going to log out of context, log back in again. StarTex, yep, still running, so that's good. Broken anything. In fact, what I should do is a complete reboot actually. Um, probably the best thing to do. Okay, so I'm going to just go back to the sources BLFS directory and just carry on looking through my list. Um, I've got one here to reinstall curl after xorg and xorg server after adoption of FOP, so those two go hand in hand. I think I'll do XORG server next and then do curl 
<coughs> so there's Xorg server. So I go back to the XC. Extract it. Protocols were already done. Uh, might actually reinstall that because we've redone Wayland. I think I don't think that will take long. So let's quickly do this one. done so to make install okay so I'll just check that that one's knocked off got to find it now uh, Right, yes, yeah, so it's done. So let's tidy that up. Go back to XC, go back to Xorg server. I know that I've just extracted it, so um oh we've got a an optional here that hasn't been installed runtime requirement. Let's load that one up. ACPID. Save link as answer. Oh, Source forge one again. Let's try that again. So I don't want this in the XC directory, just in the BLFS. That's downloaded. No extra configuration options. There's no test suite. So we'll just install it. Um, I've got some brief examples for a laptop lid. Well, I'm not on a laptop, but I guess we could install this anyway. So it needs PM utils. Uh, 
and this needs some runtime packages. So wireless tools, I haven't got wireless turned on, even though the, the machine has got wireless. So it's just saying that you need to load these into the kernel. Doesn't say what specifically what's needed. So let's now where were we? ACPID. So let's copy this in in preparation and install the BLFS boot script and start it it's okay can mark that one off ACPID now let's go to the wireless tools and save a patch as well let's tidy up here Build it and we we'll just install it. There's no configuration or testing or anything. Okay, so don't forget to add user lib to LDS our conf. Well, it should already be there actually because most of what we've been installing, most of the libraries go in that location. Oh, in fact, it's not in there. Use a local lib. Well, I would have thought it would be looking in there anyway, to be honest. If it's not in there, it must be a default location. Do this IW list, see if there are any active. No, I can't run it as the normal user. No, it looks like it's not enabled anyway, so, but at least the tools are here for use if I did ever decide to enable wireless so networking programs section 15 wireless tools knock that one off now htpalm htpalm is a useful utility to have in anyway on its own right but as the warning says be careful how you do use it, it can damage the drive or destroy the data on it get caught out with these source forges. Come on. It's taking its time. I'll tidy up while that's coming up. Right, 
Let's try the direct link. It's better. Oh, it's still going. It's taking rather a long time for a file that's tiny. It hasn't even started with the looks of it. Alright, let's try and download it again. Strange. Well, let's get this window up, find out what's happening. No, support this. It's obviously not coming from that server. Let's try another one. come from the same place. Let's try this link here. Right, that's better. Don't know it straight away. This one make a test suite. Make install. It says by default HD Palm is installed in SBIN and some systems may require it during the boot process for users mounting mounted. If you wish to install HD Palm under the user directory and replace the above command with the following. So I think it's probably safer to leave it in SBIN um, because it is a bit of a dangerous package but obviously it's up to you if you want to make it available to um, users or if it needs to be made immediately available rather so that's that done so I'll mark that one off it's under section 12 I'll say I would have installed that anyway if it hadn't had a dependency requirement because it's such a useful tool to have when you're dealing with hardware uh, disks so now let's install PM utils so just a bit of kernel configuration These are probably already set up. Suspense RAM is already set, and hibernation is already set as well, so that's fine. So we've got nothing to do with the kernel.
So no extra configuration options. Just configure it and build it. No test suite. So let's make install. If you don't have XMLTO installed, copy pre-generated main pages. So we should have had some main pages installed somewhere. Yes, yeah, so they are there. So we don't need to run these. There's the three main pages there, suspend hybrid, and suspend hybrid. And that's then being copied there, so we don't need to do that. There's a little bit there about how to configure it if you need to set it up. Apart from that, we're ready to rebuild XORG server now. So back to XC. I'm remove the XORG server because I can't remember what happened with it. So let's see what we can add to this. Enable Glamour. So we don't need that because we've got the PAM module configured. We'll put that in as well. DMX. Let's try that one. Looks like I'm not sure if this to enable Zephyr, I don't know what that is, but the dependencies have been met, so let's try it. Okay, let's build it. So that's built and we can run make check. And that's passed, so let's reinstall this now. Um don't think we need to do Let's do make install. We'll see that etc x11 xorg.conf exists and we don't need to make changes to that sysconfig file. Yes, they're already there. So there's no changes there. So that should be it for the XORG server. So I'm going to mark that off. 
Now I'm going to do curl. Actually, I'll just check that it's marked off on. So, so yep, it is. So curl is the next one. Let's tidy this up. So all I've got here is saying reinstall this after Xorg. In fact, I'd say this needs to be reinstalled after the rest of the options have been installed. Um, I don't know why I've put Xorg. Yeah, I'm going to add that after change it to optional packages there's a bit more to that makes the eye so I won't install that now um, let's see if there's any others I could do now All right, Valor is the next one which is needed after graph is So let's find that one next. Uh, there it is. Quite a valid doc. So I'm not going to disable Validoc this time obviously because Graph is, is installed. Let it build that. Now we're on make check.
Right, so tests have passed. No errors, so it's installed. I'll install this package. That's complete. So let's see what section this is, 13. That's good. And I'm going to mark that off my list. It's complete. And I've got one package to install because we've got Java installed now, which is libidn. Uh, right, but I didn't know Twitch version it is, so let's have a look. What ones we've got? We've got both of them. So that one needs it. And that one doesn't, so it's also the first version. So we can add enable GTK doc to this. Right, it's not found the Java. So I'm going to do help this time. And grab uh, Java. So let's put in enable Java. Okay, that's that's uh, turned it on now. It's found it, so we can build this. Run, make, check to test it. So as the directory already exists, I'll just do that last cp command, it's this command that's failed. And it'll just overwrite anything that's there anyway. So that's libidn reinstalled. So let's come out of that and tidy up. And see what this is in J. 
general libraries libidn I think because I've done so much with the graphics, I'm going to do another reboot. There's a sanity check. And hope that everything still works. So I'm going to come out of here, reboot this. It's all working fine still, so that's a relief. Okay, so um, I think there's a couple of um, couple more packages I may be able to install. Um, I think I can probably do make CA. And Linux Pam, I think. Yeah, make CI needed Java. So let's rebuild this one. As the root, we do these two commands first. It says if running the script for the second time, the same version of cert data, add the R switch to the run line. So let's do that and add the R switch because can't be used. Okay, so let's replace the G with the R. Then there's this cron script, which we'll come back to do when we've done cron. Um, Actually, how to create these to generate a option runtime. Alright, I wonder if it's done that then. Oh, yes, it has the extracting Java cert. So, I don't think there's anything else to do. Um, unless we can run this again for you. Let's run these commands again. Right, I 
I think that's probably done the same thing again actually. So that's rebuilt CA after Java. So that's all good. Check that's ticked off. Make CA yeah, yeah. Um the next one I've got is to rebuild Linux PAM. That's after XOR, Java, FOP, etc. So it's probably after all the dependencies, so let's take a look at that one next. Move this back down here. PC dot book. Yeah, we've got all this now, so let's extract. Let's pam again. So if you download the documentation, we've got that. If you want, oh, if you instead want to regenerate, so let's do that. Let's start again. We've got all the um tools to generate our own Oops. our own documentation. And we install Pam on the following commands. So there's no extra commands to put in here. So let's just run this. And run make. Now the next bit there's a Big warning here, if you have a system with Linux PAM installed and working, be careful when modifying files in ATC PAMD since your system may be totally unusable, become totally unusable. If you want to run the test, you do not need to create another ATC PAM other file, the install one can be used for that purpose. You should also be aware that make install overwrites configuration files in ETC security as well as ETC environment in case you have modified these files, be sure to back them up. So let's back them up first of all. to CP security to security back up Okay, and the other one is environment, so that's just a file. Okay, so we don't need to create this other file, so we'll just run the make check. So that's passed, that's okay. So let's now go back to ETC Let's look at the environment one first. 
see if that's changed and it hasn't it's still the same size let's do a diff on it oh sorry it's the make install isn't it that might modify that Just rewrite it. Uh, purpose. Make install overwrites configuration files in ETC security as well as ETC environment. Right, okay. So let's do make install to start off with. Now I'm going to become the root and go into etc and put these files back. Okay, they still haven't changed, but let's do a diff. So there's no changes in that one. So I'll remove the environment. No one. I'll leave that there for a moment. And let's check the security. They're both 48k still. Let's try to security star with security backup star. Okay, can't do that. Um, I'll just check. Because it's still a lot of sizes have changed. Uh, let's try something like four. So I'm going to check each conf file. some actually md5 some security slash star and security backup so I'll just quick compare these dcfa f1 0 p 649 that looks okay then I'll do limits dot d star Okay, is it empty, is it? Yep, and namespace dot D is also empty. So I just need to MG5 some security namespace dot init and So they're both the same, okay. So now I'm going to do the rest of the commands. Oh, I should have stayed as root, shouldn't I? So do the rest of these commands. So I don't want to change any of these because these settings 
of coal been done already we may have write something anyway so let's go back to etc 25 sum security star make sure nothing's changed again BCFIF10PC6424 D1DD Yep, that's all okay. Uh, security star forward slash limits dot D. They're both empty. And the other one I want to check is namespace, namespace.d. They're both empty. So I would say that nothing's changed in either of those directories. So I'm going to remove them, or remove the backup rather. And just check again the environment. There's nothing there, so I'm just going to remove the backup again. So what I'm also going to do is just get the terminal up and make sure I can log into it still. Um, in fact, I'll do this from the um, console, so I can log in afresh. So I'm just going to come out of this tidy this up I'm gonna control Q on that control D on that window I'm gonna come out log in and that's okay and I can SU to the root and I can SU to myself And let's see if we can log in as root as well. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any problems there. Um, I'm also going to do a reboot now to double check. That's all right. So that looks fine. So that's Linux PAM reinstalled. I'll mark that one off from my rebuild list. Now I'll just carry on looking down. I think I've got a couple here that could be installed now. Basically, um, I've got OpenSSH to install after Xorg and wget, which is just to reinstall at any time with probably some extra features. So let's take a look at OpenSSH. Um, it's one that on a standalone it wouldn't be needed, but it's quite useful to have if you can access the machine remotely for any reason. Um, in fact, I think it may be a dependency 
for another package. In fact, in fact I'll leave it until that dependency comes along. Because like I say, on a single machine you wouldn't need it in its own right. Um, but wget, I'll install again. 